Hello, everyone. I am Zhang Xiaozhang from University of Science and Technology of China. This talk is about our recent work on graph convolutional network-based knowledge graph completion. This is a joint work with Jia Wang, Jia Bingyi, and Feng Wu. I will introduce our work in five aspects. First, the background. A knowledge graph is a large-scale directed graph that stores human knowledge, where nodes represent entities and edges represent relations. We usually use a triple to represent a fact in real world, which has a head entity, a relation, and a tail entity. For example, from the knowledge graph on the left, we know that Da Vinci painted Mona Lisa, so Da Vinci is the head entity, painted is the relation, and Mona Lisa is the tail entity. Real-world knowledge graphs often suffer from the incompleteness problem. That is to say, a lot of valid triples or links in knowledge graphs are missing. For example, in the figure on the left, Lily also likes Mona Lisa in real world, but such a triple is not included in the graph. Obviously, it is impractical to find all missing links in knowledge graphs manually due to the large scale. So, automatic knowledge graph completion become popular in recent years. Knowledge graph embedding models are popular KGC models, which associate each entity and relation with an embedding vector on carefully picked embedding spaces. Then, they directly define a scoring function to model the interactions among entities and relations. Typically, there are roughly three kinds of knowledge graph embedding models. Translational distance models describe relations as translations from source entities to target entities. Bilinear models model relations as linear transformations. And neural network-based models use complex neural networks to capture interactions between entities and relations. Transi is the most representative translational distance models. It uses the Minkowski distances to define scoring functions on the real space. As a bilinear model, DIST multiple uses the inner product to define scoring function on the real space. CONVE uses convolutional neural networks to define scoring functions. Graph convolutional networks are a class of powerful models to capture graph structures. Usually, GCNs follow an iterative message passing framework, which consists of an aggregate and an update step. In each iteration, the representation of each node is updated using information aggregated from the node's neighborhood. Note that unlike classical graph convolutional networks and simple graphs, GCNs used for knowledge graphs must take the relations into account. GCN-based KGC models usually use an encoder-decoder framework, where GCNs perform as the encoder and KGE models perform as the decoder. First, the encoder generates representations for entities and relations in a KG then, the decoder uses the generated representations to predict values in the adjacency tensors. Since there exists a bijection between adjacency tensors and graph structures, the prediction can be seen as a recovery of the original graph structures. When recovering graph structure, the decoder can predict links missing in the original graph. Here we give the entity aggregation, entity update and transformations for relations of three popular GCNs in KGC, including RGCN, WGCN, and CompGCN. All of the three models are specially designed for multi-relational graphs. We can see that the embedding update processes have three main parts. Aggregating information from graph neighborhoods, transformations for aggregated entity representations, and transformations for relation representations. Next, I introduce the experimental setup in our whole work. For encoders, we study three representative GCN models introduced before. As to decoders, we use three popular models, TRANS-E, DIST multiple, and CONVE. Many existing state-of-the-art GCN-based KGC models use the binary cross-entropy loss, and we follow their settings. Using this loss, we regard all the triplets not seen in the training set as negative samples. We use two popular knowledge graph completion datasets. The statistics of these two datasets are summarized in the table. We re-implement RGCN, WGCN, and CompGCN with DGL. 
as we aim to isolate the effects of GCNs instead of benchmarking the performance of GCN-based KGC models. We follow the guidelines provided by the original GCN papers or official implementations for model selection and do not spend time in tuning hyperparameters. For evaluation, we predict corrupted entities in triplets and use the filtered setting that does not take existing valid triplets into account at ranking. We use mean rank, mean reciprocal rank, and hits at n as the evaluation metrics. Lower MR and higher MRR, or H at n, indicate better performance. Using the aforementioned experimental setup, we explore the real effect of GCNs in KGC. As shown in the table, GCN-based KGC models do not show a great advantage over state-of-the-art KGE models, though introducing additional computational complexity. The results raise a natural question. What is the real effect of GCNs in the KGC task? To answer the question, we decompose it into the following two sub-questions. Do GCNs really bring performance gain? Which factor of GCNs is critical in KGC? We conduct experiments to validate whether GCNs really bring performance gain over KGE models. The table shows that in most cases, GCNs, especially the state-of-the-art comp GCN, significantly improve the performance of KGE models. Notably, on FB237, WGCN plus TransE performs worse than TransE in both the original and reproduced cases. A similar phenomenon can also be observed for WGCN plus DIST multiple slash CONVE on WN18RR. It demonstrates that not all GCNs can improve the performance of all KGE models. In summary, the answer to the first question is yes. GCNs do bring performance gain over KGE models for the KGC task. GCNs are known to be effective in modeling graph structures. Therefore, if we break graph structures, the performance of GCN-based KGC models is expected to decrease significantly. Since graph structure information of a knowledge graph is represented by its adjacency tensor, we conduct experiments with randomly broken adjacency tensors to explore the effect of the graph structures. The table shows the results for GCNs with random adjacency tensors. Surprisingly, randomly breaking the graph structures does not affect the overall performance of GCN-based KGC models on both datasets. The models with random adjacency tensors attain comparative performance to their normal adjacency tensor counterparts. The results demonstrate that, although GCN encoders can improve the performance of KGE models, graph structure modeling in GCNs is not critical for performance improvements. To further explore the relationship between graph structure modeling in GCNs and the performance improvements, we conduct experiments that do not use neighbor information in the aggregation process. The results show that on both datasets, the models without using neighbor information perform competitively with the original models. It demonstrates that the performance gain does not come from the neighborhood aggregation. To determine whether self-loop information is necessary for the performance gain, we conduct experiments without self-loop information. That is to say, the representation of an entity is generated only based on the representations of its neighborhood entities and relations. Here we only discuss the results on FB15K237. Surprisingly, leaving out the self-loop information does not have a significant impact on the performance of most models as well. In most cases, only aggregating the neighbor information achieves comparative results to full GCN-based KGC models. Further, we randomly break the adjacency tensors while leaving out self-loop information. Since we only use neighbor information, we expect the random adjacency tensors to reduce the performance significantly. However, as shown in the table, the performance is only slightly affected for most of the decoders. That is, only aggregating randomly generated neighbor information achieve comparative results to full GCN-based KGC models. Until now, we have known that the following operations do not have a significant effect on the performance of GCN-based KGC models on FB237. Only using self-loop information, only using neighbor information, and only using randomly generated neighbor information. The three cases have one common property. They can distinguish entities having different semantics with high confidence. To find out whether the above property is necessary for the performance gain, 
We conduct experiments in which we do not use self-loop information and meanwhile randomly sample neighbors in a given entity set to find out whether the above property is necessary for the performance gain. We conduct experiments in which we do not use self-loop information and meanwhile randomly sample neighbors in a given entity set. The results in the figures meet our expectations. We also conduct experiments using self-loop information and randomly sampled neighbors. The figures show that the performance is relatively stable when the set sizes vary. It is expectable since the self-loop information itself can uniquely determine an entity, no matter what the neighbor information is. In summary, GCNs improve the performance of KGE models if the aggregation process can well distinguish entities with different semantics. Different from RGCN and WGCN, CompGCN applies linear transformations for relation embeddings. We conduct ablation experiments to explore the effect of the transformations. The results show that linear transformations for relations are not critical for GCN-based KGC models. Recall that the embedding update process of a GCN-based KGC model has three main parts. We have shown that two of them the aggregation based on graph structures and transformations for relations are not critical for GCN-based KGC models. Thus, the transformations for aggregated entity representations are critical for the performance improvements. Based on the above results, we conclude that so long as a GCN can well distinguish entities with different semantics by its generated entity representations, the transformations for entity representations can effectively improve the performance of KGE models. Based on the aforementioned observations, we propose a simple yet effective KGC framework. Motivated by the previous experimental results, we propose a framework named LTEKGE. The proposed formulation is shown in the slides. Overall, it simply applies linear transformations to entity representations. Obviously, LTEKGE can well distinguish entities with different semantics by their generated entity representations. Also, it has transformations for entity representations. We conduct experiments for DIST multiple, TRANS-E, and CONVE. The results show that LTEKGE significantly improves the performance of DIST multiple and CONVE. Although LTEKGE does not explicitly model local graph structures like GCNs, it performs comparably to the GCN-based KGC models and sometimes even performs better. We also evaluate the efficiency of different models. We train and test the models on the same machine. The batch size, the number of training epochs, and the number of test samples are the same. The number of GCN layers is one. The results demonstrate that adding GCN encoders, especially RGCN, suffers from high training and test time usage. On the contrary, LTEKGE models are as efficient as models without GCNs. Therefore, LTEKGE models have the benefit of GCN models and avoid their heavy computational load. To understand why LTEKGE models perform similarly to GCN-based KGC models, we show that LTEKGE behaves like a GCN-based model with a single GCN layer being an encoder. While it does not aggregate information from neighborhoods explicitly, specifically, the gradients of LTEKGE models can be unified as given in the slides. It has a very similar formulation to the GCN aggregation and update procedure. Therefore, the combination of a KGE model and gradient descent already behaves like GCN aggregations. Thus, additional explicit aggregations are unnecessary, and it is reasonable that LTEKGE achieves similar performance to GCN-based KGC models. Now we conclude our work. In this work, we conduct extensive experiments to find the real critical part behind the complicated architectures of GCN-based KGC models. Surprisingly, experiments show that the graph structure modeling is unimportant for GCN-based KGC models. Instead, the ability to distinguish different entities and the transformations for entity embeddings account for the performance improvements. Thus, we suggest that novel GCN-based KGC models should count on more ablation studies to validate their effectiveness. Our code is publicly available on GitHub. If you have any question about our work, please do not hesitate to contact us. Thanks for your listening.